Hello together and welcome back to another episode here on Flutter Explained. Today we want to create this fantastic animation that I found on github.com. And if we jump into github directly, we can see here that if we navigate onto that card, it looks stunning. Like you have that wiggling effect. And if you lose the connection, then it automatically resizes it to the old yeah, place that it needs to be. Also, we have an animation if we hover that card and we can click on these sponsor icons here inside. I would like to test it today if we can recreate that in Flutter. Last point that I forgot nearly is, as you can see that background, that orange one, whenever we hover that card, it will not follow the mouse completely to the bottom. And we want to take a look on how we can create such a nice little card. And if you have never seen this card on github.com, to join as an incognito mode, because if you are logged in, you will not see this card. Fantastic, and now without further ado, let's jump into code and create it. This video is supported by DCM. Check out the link down in the video description to get more information about it. In general, it is a static code analyzer that supports your project and maintain, make it more maintainable. But without further ado, let's get back into the video. Okay, before we jump into programming, let's have a quick look and discuss what we have to create inside of that card. But the first thing, the obvious thing, is the animation that we can see if we wiggle around with the mouse. So on hover, that card gets a transformation in a 3D dimensional space, looking very cool and jazzy. The second part is, okay, some text should be not too complicated, but you have that link down here. And as you can see, that icon is also animating, as well as the stroke on the bottom. The third thing that we can look into is the light that comes when the mouse enters the card. And it follows the card not perfectly, but like um, the mouse cursor not perfectly, but when we go to the bottom, it's like 70% of the card space. And then the last thing is the sponsor cards that we can see here that are on top of everything, and we can click on the different sponsors. All right, so now that we are in here, let's create our first or our Flutter project. Flutter create and we say hover or GitHub card hover with hyphen E so that we create an empty card object going into our project and let's say code dot. In our case, we are opening up Visual Studio Code. And this time, because we want to make it full screen and uh, not yet um, yeah, mobile friendly, we will have to work on a bigger screen probably. So that means probably we need some little bit more space here. So let's see how we can display that. In the meantime, I recall the things that we need to solve. The first problem we wanted to solve is that we are able to move the card and transform it with the different SKUs. So what we can do is first of all, run our Flutter app and to make sure that we see it also probably, let's open up that correctly. All right, so on our right side, we see our Flutter app, just keep it for now like this. And what we would like to do is we will create the Flutter card app here inside. To make that able, we create a size box for now with, let's give that a height of let's say 500 and a width of 500. And inside of here we have a child that is a container, probably, yeah. So child and there is a color box inside where we just pass in the color that we would like. So in our case, colors.black, for example. Good. So now we have a black colored uh, part and we have a rectangular, fantastic. And now we would like to make that move. So what we can do is we go to the size box and we wrap that with a transform widget. Now we have that transform ready and here inside we pass in a transform with a matrix four, like this is a four dimensional array with four uh, elements inside and this leads to the identity. And here we can now set different things. Like for example, uh, the position, we can rotate things. Like if I enter here, rotate, we can rotate them by all the three axes. So X axis, uh, sorry, X axis, the Y axis and the Z axis, right? And if we do that, for example, with a scale of five, we can see it now drops up. And what we also can see, it goes and transforms it from the top. We don't like that. So what that means, we say alignment dot center. And now it rotates from the center position. So we will see that if I make that a little bit less. So if I say zero, we don't rotate. If I zero dot one, 
re-rotate a little bit, a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, etc. Now that looks not really interesting, right? The reason is we don't have a perspective that we have to add here. So what we can do is we say we add here a perspective and uh, no, that's not it. We have to set the entry here manually. And that is the row of the, <laughs> that's very interesting. So in metrics four, we've set entry, we set really the value of a specific one of these metrics four values. So the row three, column two, and the value can be anything, but it should be very small. And as you see now, the top level is now a little bit more to front to us like from the feeling here, right? So it is more kept to us. And we can do that also in a reverse direction. If we then move it to minus four, now it looks like the bottom is there. So with this perspective part, we really have the possibility to set everything up. Please make sure that the order is correct. That means, first of all, we transform everything directly. So don't create multiple transforms and try to solve it this way, because that leads to very weird problems. And the other thing is, Keep the set entry as the first entry because with that you have the possibility to see the perspective directly. Now we rotate x by my, uh, by something. So I will just call that now the, um, 1 just to make it easy. And then we want to rotate it by y also 1. But now we only have a random number. So these has to change. So we have a to do, right? So we need... Uh, calculate based on a mouse cursor. And this is going to be spicy again. So that means, first of all, this transform needs to be wrapped in a mouse region. We had that the last time already, where we pass in information like, for example, hover or on exit or on yes, and so forth and so on, like on enter. All these are different events. And now it's getting to be interesting because this event holds, for example, the local position of the mouse. So if we print this, we can see that uh, wherever I go inside of the, um, the element, we can see directly the print outputs where exactly the mouse is. So inside of this rectangular. And as you also see, we have the local part, but it is outside of the skewing, just to keep that in mind. If you want to have it inside, you would need to do that inside of this metric identity. So then the mouse region would be not here, but it would be here, just to make that clear. We can also do that actually to make sure that it works. So we pass in here the mouse region and inside of here we have the um, on hover. And now we use the event and we make it this way, print event.local position. And the good thing is now it should be also in the delta so that means here we don't be inside of the hover event, but if we go inside of it, we can directly see it. And that leads also to possibilities to see where exactly we are. So now on hover, we have quite a lot to do. So whenever we start hovering, we want to recalculate the width and the, uh, the delta position. And I already said that we want to move between a certain amount of degrees, like one and minus one and 1.5 and minus 1.5. That needs to be calculated. And the easiest way is that we find a value between one, uh, 0 and 1, like 0% and 100%. And in between this range, our mouse cursor moves. So how do we calculate that? First, we need our card width. And I already told you how to get that. Um, we can get that by the constraints. I thought the local position, but no, we need constraints. We need to say, how big is the element inside? So how can we do that? We ask for a so-called layout builder, which doesn't get a child, it gets a builder. And then here inside we have the context and constraints, and then we pass out the mouse region. Now inside of here, we have the card width, and then we have the card height, which is constraints.max height. Great stuff. So we now know exactly how large the card is. And from there, we need now percentage of how where our mouse cursor is moving. So the idea is to calculate that. And how can we do that? First, we need the delta. So where exactly is the mouse cursor? Mouse cursor delta x equals to card width minus the event local position dot. The local position is an offset. Therefore, with that, we have the calculation here. And the same for, for y. And this gives us the 
knowledge where exactly we are located inside of the, the card and how much space we have to the end of that. And now what we can do is with this information, we can calculate a rotation. So what we will do is probably call set state to make an update to our widget all the time. Uh, so that it feels like an animation at the end, which is not, it's just an update of state. So set state, therefore we need to make our stateless widget a so-called stateful widget. We have the possibility to set up state and we will work with that soon, but that also means we need some kind of state. And for us, that is the rotation X. Yeah, let's call it rotation X, which is a variable for now. And what we also want to have is Y. And I would like to give that a default value of 0 0.5 or actually of zero. Rotation X and Y can be now used here in these values. And it complains Y ah, because it feels like an int. Yeah, that's true. So we have to make that a double. And now he doesn't complain anymore and the values are set inside. So we have the rotation of X and the rotation of X, uh, Y. Okay, now we have to a little bit think. If we have the delta of X, what uh, what axis do we want to move? We would like to move the Y axis here. So that means if we move our mouse cursor on the X axis, we would like to move not this axis, we want to move this axis. That means for us, just to keep it in mind, it's the rotation of X will change if the Y value will change and the rotation of Y will change when we change the X axis. We have to first get the uh, angle that we would like to have. We get that by 100 mouse cursor delta X <clears throat> divided by the card width times 180. And this gives us the radius uh, or the value that we need. Oh, that's not completely correct, sorry. 100 minus 0 0.5. So, and this value is quite an interesting calculation, but what happens at the end, we want to get a percentage minus 0 0.5 and 5, 0 0.5. And if we have that value, this is our rotation that we need. And the same thing we do for the rotation Y. So actually we can take nearly the same thing, just saying this is the delta Y and the card height. Everything else stays the same, just easy calculation. Good. And that's actually it for the movement, I guess. And with that, what we can do, just to keep in mind, we can now use this rotation X and Y inside of our movement up here. And actually that should already do the trick. So if we look into it, we have a set state, everything is fine. I will just hot restart quickly. Whoa, wow, that is massively. <laughs> so something is off. Maybe we move too fast. Ah, uh, no, I was mistaken. This is just a percentage calculation that we do to get the percentage of movement inside of the card. But the radius calculation happens here. So the rotate part, we can say times math.py uh, divided by 180. And math.py is just an import that we have to do. So import math as math, great. And with that, we should be fine up here. And the same thing we do here, math.py divided by 180. So if we do that, it should now not flip that much anymore. So let's see, well, still heavily too much. Ah, yeah, obvious. The rotation value X is of course the percentage that we want to have, but plus and minus 0 0.5, that's a better option to say that. Oh, great. So we have to say how much we want to have actually. I say now minus three. Why? Because we use 0 0.5 as a values. And that brings us to 0 0.3 because we want to have it between 1.5 and uh, minus 1.5. And the same thing we do for the um, Y calculation. So we say times two times whatever happens here. So hot restart. And we still move way too fast. Ah, I played now a little bit around, but I found the problem. Obviously we should divide here because that uh, gives of course the percentage and not multiply it. That was a stupid little mistake, but I cleaned a little bit up. I brought, um, yeah, I just made it a little bit nicer to read and let's hot reload and try it out. Oh, beautiful. So it is very not minor. We can't nearly see it but it moves the card in respective. So we know exactly where the card is and it feels 
very natural. Say 50-50, and now we have really movement here on that card. And it seems on the top, it seems a little bit off because here we get top. Did I make a mistake somewhere? So, and if I go to the top and to the bottom, we can see that the card is going just flat. It's not really turning or something, you know, it should be a bit bigger than usual. So like here in the x-axis, we see it works proper, but in the y-axis, it seems not to work well. So if we know that, and what can we do? Oh, I see, the size box here is obviously out, uh, inside. That's not possible because the layout builder don't know how big he is. That is, of course, a no-no. So we have to say here the height 450 and the width 450, voila. And now with that, we have a moving card. Does it work? Yeah, now it works, right? So much better. So, we so that's already good. And we know now, okay, we want to have that between minus three and two. And that gives us this little bit of emotion, you know, not too much, not too less. You can also increase that if you think it's too less, double it or something, but I think it's quite fine. What you also can do is increasing this entry here. This is the perspective that it gives. So the perspective is making a huge difference in the way it moves. So if you have that, that's already quite well. But that means we have already checked the first box where we say, okay, we need some possibility to move the card here. So the second part, what we can do is we can take a look into the um, animation of showing the background whenever the mouse cursor appears. And how can we do that? Well, inside of our set state, what we would need is of course our location of the mouse. So our mouse location. So this will be an offset. And at the moment, this is an offset of zero. So this mouse location will be always set when we hover. So we say in our set state two, this one is our event.local position. So with that, we know now exactly where the mouse location is always set so that we can also print out, but it doesn't make a difference. So now we can see in the chat the same thing like before, that we see where the mouse is located. At this point, we need some kind of widget. We would like to make something visible. And in the last episode, we already talked about how we can um, yeah, set something like this up. So the idea is that this one is transforming, that's nice and dandy, and this colored box needs a second part. It needs a widget wrapper, we need a stack inside. That means this one will be our bottom below children, right? Children, so this one goes away, adding this, so, and now it's gone. So how did we manage to lose our widget here? Uh, it is not visible, that's interesting. Okay, let's add uh, the stack inside of a container. So, and this container has a decoration, box decoration, and here we give some colors. So, for example, colors dot blue for now. Okay, this one we can see it is just a child container. Okay, we don't need that then necessarily because our whole thing will be still transformed. Fine, good, we have that. So now we still need the stack and the stack consists out of two things. Like first is the card content and the second needs to be, oh no, it needs to be on top, right? So the one on top, no, underneath of it, we want to have it below. The color of the card needs to be below. So that means we have this, um, yeah, how do we call it? Spotlight. Yeah, that our file here is getting bigger and bigger as always, right? So I would say we create two widgets for that, for the card content and for the spotlight. So let's create a new file, spotlight.dart, which is a stateless widget for now, spotlight widget, and let's have a look how we can implement that. So what I would like to have actually is, we need some possibility to follow our um, mouse cursor with uh, something, right? And this needs to be visible on top. So to make that easy, it could be just something very simple. So let's say we import this one and this spotlight we can see already is on the full size of this element. Now we would like to move it around. How is that possible? We have a stack, so we can use a so-called position it. 
And here we can now set up the left value, for example, the mouse location dot D. Now we have the mouse location D X. So does that, oh yeah, okay, it follows now the mouse already, right? So the placeholder follows up. It cannot leave the container, but you can see it follows around. So the same thing we do for the top part, right? We say the mouse location uh, dy. And with that, we can also move it on the different axes. Fantastic, but that doesn't look very beautiful. So let's change this placeholder to a container. And why do we need a container? Because of the decoration, box decoration. And here inside we pass in a gradient. And we want to not have a box gradient, we would have a radial gradient. And here you can specify the colors. So for us, it will be a list of colors dot deep orange. And the other color that we want to gradient to is colors dot transparent. And now we can see we have this deep orange and transparent radial gradient. So let's see what happens. Nothing, we don't see it. Huh, why don't we see it? Let's say we would make this container and passing in it a child placeholder. Okay, now with a child, we can see it. So it seems that if there is no child, it's getting invisible. This is of course a problem. That means we remove that again. And what we can do is giving that container a width and a height. In our case, this width and height is exactly the same as uh, the container above. Great, now we move, but there is a problem. It seems that we cannot make the alignment center directly at placing of the mouse cursor. So that means that dot that we have created with the radial is now somewhere else than our mouse cursor. That's bad. So how can we change that? Actually quite easy. The solution is, uh, let's change that again to black. I think it looks a little bit more like it. Um, I cleaned a little bit up in between, made the card again black and so on. But as you can see, we still have that problem. That means when we are on the top left at zero, zero, the container is not actually following us correctly. So how can we do that? We remove the constraints dot um, max, in this case width, divided by two. And as you can see, now we are on the same height. The same thing we do for y, constraints dot max height divided by two. And as you can see now, the pointer is moving directly with the mouse cursor. Fantastic. But there is more to it, obviously, as always, right? That would be too easy. We also want to make a nice little animation if we go outside and we would like to, yeah, um, make a, a nice little animation if we come in again. So with that, we have already our nice little mouse region event. So we can say on enter, when there is an enter event, we just keep, keep in mind that there will be a boolean of is hovered and which is false at the beginning and can be set whenever we want. So this one will change now, set state equals uh, true. And the same thing for on exit and we say false. So, and these are our triggers for our animation that we would like to have. So this means whenever we want, um, we have this nice little transition. And for that, we can use a so-called animated container. In our spotlight, if we remember, we have this box decoration container. We can move that to an animated container. So, which gets a duration. Let's say we make milliseconds of 300. So, but something has to change, right? Mm. And what could change actually? So depending on if this is hovered or not, we could change here the colors that we pass in. For example, deep orange would be then always visible when we are hovered and else not. So is hovered, we don't have that here, obviously. So bool, uh, final bool is hovered. And here inside we pass that in. So this dot is hovered. Now this part can be used here. Is hovered, question mark. Then this else colors dot transparent is hovered is required because we don't have a value, but in general, we can say it's false or better we go down here and say this is false. So, and then this is also not required anymore. So, but we want to have that required because we pass it directly in. 
Oh, look at that. So it looks now very nice and uh, indeed. So it slowly disappears when we go outside. We can see how it comes in again if we move inside and so on. Beautiful. Now, next steps. What could we need more? One problem is that I already see is that this little radiant is too small compared to our uh, GitHub equivalent. So if we go to github.com and have a look, if we go here to our card that we have, the background color, that very big deep orange, first of all, it is way less visible than ours. And the second thing, it spreads so far. So how can we do that, that it, we also spread this far? So if we have a look, ours is so small compared to that. Also, the colors don't match up. So first of all, to get the colors, I, uh, have that pre prepared here already. Um, what I did is I just reduced the transparency here. So let's remove this height and width. And now we don't see it anymore, but if we go to our main part, in our position, we can set the same values like width. And here we can say we take the constraints width, uh, the max width, and we can say the height is the constraints max height. And with that, we should see it again. Yeah, of course we see it. Uh, the reason is I made it so dark again that I couldn't see it myself. But here it is. And we can see the size is still the same. But what we can do is we increase that by two, for example. And now it is massively bigger. But again, we have that problem here on that side. So probably we don't have to divide by two. Let's see. Yes, that looks better. But it's still a little bit small, I would say. Let's increase that even further and say we want to have the fourth times of it. And now we will have to calculate a little bit differently. So here we say times two. So, and if we do that, we have now this massively big orange spot. So the question is now, if I make that darker again, hopefully I can see, ah, now it's get a little bit darkish. Okay, let's keep it a bit lighter that we see it directly for now. But there is another thing that we have to keep in mind. If we look at again on our GitHub page, I don't know if you feel that, but I can directly see it that this spotlight is not following us one by one. That means if I go down, the spotlight is staying a little bit higher and I feel it's like around 70%-ish where the spotlight is heading to. And the reason is that the main entrance of that headlight is not inside of the card, it is somewhere here. So it feels like here would be the source of the light. And depending on that, I can go into all these directions, but it will never touch for fully the back at uh, the grounds. That means in our, let me think, X direction, we want to only move 70% here. Okay, so let's see how we can do that. Switch over here and let's see. That means in our top position, we only want to go at le a maximum of 70%. So we say divided by 100 times 70. And as you can see now, the mouse is not perfectly aligned anymore with the spotlight. So with that, we have already solved two major problems <clears throat> that we wanted to solve. We have first the movement and the beauty of that nice little spotlight <clears throat> here. So now we can start by cleaning a little bit up. So for example, the width is a little bit larger, right? So we would like to make that responsive. So we can see something like this, but we would need, of course, some kind of padding surrounding it, wrapping it with a padding, getting that and increase that by 32, something like this, to that it look has a little bit space. Also, I would like to decrease the um, perspective to one. So now it doesn't move anymore uh, uh, that much anymore. We have still that text here, that simple. But we have this part down here. So also let's have a look how we have to organize everything. So there seems to be a row, uh, a column on that side, a column on that side. And if we go to the smaller screens, how does it look here? We have still the text in a smaller sense, but everything is now in a column. So it's a flex here. So maybe we can do something similar for our issue. Let's see. So let's start with our Color, uh, with our text up here and with this one. And it seems we need a rich text because of the span here. It looks a little bit different than on that side. And also what I would like to do is introducing a possibility to store different color sets depending on where we are so that I don't have to always rewrite things. So how does we do that? Inside of our lib, we create a constants.dart. And inside of here, we create a class called colors. Uh, or better, a specific name, GitHub Colors. 
So this is in general a good idea to really put these things outside so that you have them always accessible very easily and you don't have to take too much time into that. Also what I would like to do is um, there is a font color system that um, yeah GitHub provides to us. So um, if we check this font is the so-called Mona Sans font. Oops, sorry, Mona Sans font that GitHub provides us. So you can just take that and now let's integrate that into our Flutter project. How does that work? Well, you go to our Mona Sans page. There you have the releases. Then you click on the Mona Sans zip file, downloads the whole thing. If we go now to downloads, we find the Mona Sans zip. Inside of here, you have the TTF and you have all the kinds of fonts, but we actually are just interested in the, where's regular? There is regular. So we take this one and add that to our VS code into our assets folder. Let me check. So inside of here, we create a assets folder and inside of here we have the fonts and then we pass in that one. And now we have the name here. So I take the name of this one, go to our pubspec.yaml and inside of here we have our fonts and then we have to set the family. That is Mona Sans. Please make sure to write that correctly because this is the identifier that you will have later whenever you want to access it directly. So, and the other one is, uh, burp, burp, burp. let me check again. So fonts, family, and then we have assets, the asset, and this is now assets slash fonts slash, and then the name of the file. Now, if we got everything, that's fantastic. So we are already prepared and with that we should have everything that we need to actually um, yeah bring bring the card alive and create some card content so in our main.dart we find this card content and here we would like to create also a new widget i think that we can pass in all kinds of things so we call that card content dot dart a stateless widget for now card content so switching back and introducing it now we could make it responsive and everything, but I will really focus for now on the desktop version and then later we will take a look into the mobile framework if this video receives a lot of likes and I get a lot of comments where written is inside. Please give us the responsiveness, please make it perfect. And else hit the like button, subscribe to our channel if you haven't yet. This is the right moment. Thank you. Click, 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 click. Great. Good. Now I have that and with this we can go over and let's think about that should be fairly simple so what we want to have is a column for now and inside of this column we have children and yeah what children do we have um, actually we have a text rich and inside of here we want to have boop, boop, boop. and with this text span we say github sponsors and this is a bit important here because that span here so and what we can see now is, interesting enough, the space has <laughs> changed his size. Uh, did not re uh, recall that this would happen. But what we can see is that we have now this GitHub sponsors up here and the wrong text uh, font. But we will change that in a sec. And the uh, next thing is we want to have a next one. Um, we don't have to create this. But here inside of the text span, we have again a span, I think, or child. Exactly, which then has again text spans in it. So inside of here, we can have then the full text that we would like to have. Let's add that here. Fantastic. Good. And if we now select it here or check out, we can see it is one line where we have really written GitHub sponsors lets you support blah, blah, blah. And now we have the chance to really change the text style for both of them. And the good thing is if you have a main text style, you can add that to the parent rich. So style, you can add here all kinds of things and it overrides everything underneath of it. But we don't want that. We really want to set one for each of them. So how do we want to have that? So our GitHub sponsors is uh, theme.off context. Here we take the th text theme. We say title large and then we say copy with and inside of here we set some information. So for the colors we know that the text color here should be just white but as you can see now it traverses like CSS to all its children so all the text spans inside have the same value as this one. 
So that's fine for now, but we will change that in a sec. So then the font family is Mona Sans. Added that before. And we have a font size. <clears throat> Let's give it 24, I think. Fantastic. And a font weight, 500. Good. With all these, we should be fine now. Okay, same thing for below here. So what do we have to change? If we want to keep the same font size, which we do, we don't have to change that, but we would like to have a different color. So what we need to do is inside of here, style, text style, no, theme dot. And inside of here, we just want to copy the color, which is now the uh, GitHub colors dot text color. So now it looks already a little bit different. So it feels like the font size has changed, but it could be that font family is different. Okay, that changed actually, okay. So if you if you override it, you override it completely. So that's the reason. So I have to follow up that too. And also the font size needs to be also followed up. Now that looks better. Okay, and with that, we have already the text, that's that. And now inside of that column, we also need that link button. Link button. Good. Also, what I would like to do is this column needs some spacing to the sides, right? So padding off, let's give it a 32. Nice, something like this. Great. Underneath of that, we would like now to have our um, link. We already know that this link button contains a lot of animations, movement, and so on and so forth. So it sounds already complicated. So I will also create for that already uh, a different um, yeah, file so that we have that separated. So it is the link button file. Okay, and I know already that we will have some kind of state. Let's do it already so that we have a stateful widget. That means in our card content, we can have that link button visible and adding it already, import, bum. And obviously it's way too large at the moment, but that's no problem. We will solve that in a second. <clears throat> so let's go. If we think about it to make it as simple as possible, how would it look like? It would be a, yeah, a row actually with two, two text elements inside, right? Uh, or with one text element actually and if we have a look inside of here. So what we can see is, first of all, there is a border on the bottom. Now, if we want to ed uh, animate borders, it's gonna be tricky. We can't use the decoration border because it's on or off, we can't animate it. So the idea is to create a container or something on the bottom to animate this line directly on the size. And then we can see that it seems like the arrow goes to the right and then there is this line coming out. The idea here would be that we have two icons one with an arrow that has no line behind and then one with a line behind and we just show them simultaneously as soon as we hover on that. So I would say let's start with the easiest part and try to replace this text holder with a text actually and just say invest with github sponsors. So if we do that we can see it's darkish so and this gives us already a hint that we have to go to the card content. And here's the column, uh, cross axis alignment, and that should start at the start, because now we can see the text begins on the left side. Good, in our link button, we would now have to do the same thing like we did before. Theme dot of context, the, uh, text theme dot title large, exclamation mark, copy with, we have the color, which is colors.white. We have the font family, which is Mona Sans. And last but not least, we have the font size and we put that into 20. So great stuff. So we have this. Okay, now if we hover, something should happen. So that means we need here a so-called uh, mouse region. We know that already. We have an on hover. And on hover, something happens, right? In our kind, uh, case, we print an event. And with that, if we take a look into our debug console, we get tons and tons of messages whenever we hover that thing. Good, not necessarily what we want, but a good start. Okay, is there any issue so far? We can move that, we have this. And if we have that, what we can do is just say on enter, we say that set state, and we say there is a variable that we pass in here 
is a uh, bool is hovered, which is at the beginning of course false. And if it is here inside, then we set it true. And else on exit, we set it on false. Good, with that we have the information if it is hovered or not. So let's try to make that line below it. So we have that column. So exactly, that means this text needs to be inside of a column again. So let's see if that works. Yep, that's good. And inside of here, we would like to have a container. And the container should change uh, whenever we hover, right? So we want to animate it. So for that, we have the animated container, which has a duration. Let's say we have here duration of milliseconds 200. Oh, and everything drives crazy again. Okay, because also here we need to set the cross axis alignment to start. Yep, looks good. And now this container has, um, we can also define the curve, which we do curves.ease. I think that looks nice. But what actually should change, right? So there is a width that we can say is hovered, let's say 300, else zero. That means Whenever we hover now that element, we can see that the width of this container is expanding to that size or not. So what we need is then a decoration, box decoration, which contains a border, border with bottom, and the bottom border is a border side, and the border side has a color of colors.white and a width of one. So if my logic appears now, we should go on to that and we see that line stroke. Fantastic, that's already it, that works. Great stuff. And thanks to the ease, it's also great. So now we just have to align a little bit on how far we want to move that line. Fantastic, something like this looks good. And with that, we know now we can do that. And the best thing is our transition, like on the background, that matrix is still behaving correctly. Oh, uh, inside of the content, of course. So here we have the main axis alignment, space between. And with that, we have some space between these two. Looks already quite promising, right? So this looks nearly the same as this. Maybe we could say that this one is a bit bolder, but that's fine. I think you can just change the font sizing if you like. Okay, now I said already we have one more problem and that's the animated icon and the side. So let's increase here a little bit the size box height. Let's say give it a free. Okay, now let's think about the icon. What we would need is a stack that we can place all both icons on top of each other. And I would like that these two are separated by a row. That means this column here should be surrounded by a row. Yep, on the bottom we have it, a row. So now this can contain a multiple thing, this can be gone. And here we would like to create a stack with children of our icons, right? How could that work? Between these two, I would also consider a sized box because I would like that the width, let's give it an eight, I think six would be also fine, just to have like a separation between them. So I would like to add these icons. The first thing is to get the icons itself. Thankfully, there is a Flutter package for that called Flockter Octicons. So let's add that to our pubspec.yaml. So with that, we get really the icons of um, yeah, GitHub and that's already helpful. And here inside we have now two widgets that we would like to show, the animated opacity. So here we can say how opaque it should be. So is hovered one or zero. And the duration is as always milliseconds. Let's give it 200 so that it feels like one thing. So now that we have that, what is the child of this opacity? We would like to show an icon. Icon. And inside of here we have the oct icons now. Oh. So, ah, it was in dev dependencies. Okay, fair enough. Makes sense. So now we have it also in the right dependencies. Octo icons, fantastic. And here we find an arrow to the right, 24. Um, you can wiggle also around with the different uh, possibilities here. So icon, this one, color, and here we just take colors white. So now we should see that whenever we hover. <gasps> 
Bob, Bob. Okay, so it I introduced. And this one is the icon with that arrow, right? With that line behind. So now the other one should slide in and out. So that means we need an animate slider. And there we have a duration again. That is const duration uh, milliseconds. We take 200 again. So we would like to move that whenever we hover. But if it is hovered, then we would like to go to the offset 0, 2 and 0. So just this little tiny part, it should move to the right. And else offset, oops, offset dot 0. So if we hover, then it should move a little bit, else it stays on 0. How does that look like? Oh, we can't see it yet. Obviously, because we don't have a child. So also here we give an icon, uh, the octo icons. And the good thing is oct icons, not this one. The chevron right, also in 24. Color is the same, good. And now it's always visible. And if we now head over and touch it, and it looks quite the same, right? So and with that, we have this animation running. This works. Is there anything that I could take? The only thing is, at the moment, this is not clickable, right? So what we need is inside of this mouse region, we need a gesture detector. And this on tap, we just say print clicked the link. Here you could create an URL opener or whatever and then touch that link. But we just want to execute this and we clicked it. Something is interesting. Somehow I don't see it as a clickable. So probably in the mouse region, we would have to change the cursor to system mouse click. So let's see if that works. Yeah, much better. Now you could think about, okay, uh, because this is now one row that goes to the end, um, it will also take the hover effect if you go here. You could fix that very easily with a fixed width or um, just with a bit more specifics to keep that as narrow as possible. You can also just make it shrink in the easiest way. But with that, we have also our third element ready. We know now how to make this nice little, yeah, animation. All right, so now we are at the last step. And the last step is to create the sponsor card on the right side. So how can we do that? First of all, to make something on the right side, we need to change the layout a little bit. We need a row here so that we can split by half the place, right? So this column here um, is inside of the card content and here we would like to have a row. So we can easily add here a row. Now it will expand quite far. So what we can say is we wrap this one with an expanded widget. So this already make it quite nice. We can also make that a flexible so that it will only use the space it needs and then we could reduce the flex as we want. So that are just ideas. I will take now an expanded. <coughs> um, we can change that later if it is not uh, yeah, fitting. Now here we would like to have at least a container for now. Container. Uh, which is also expanded in this case. So expanded to make it half-half so that we can say, okay, directly in the center we have that line and here it is separated. And because of the padding, everything gets a little bit of inset. So we have the chance to work now inside of here. Mm -hmm. So the, in order to make this uh, con um, the sponsor card grid that we saw on the right side, we first start by creating the sponsor card itself. Um, so if I open up a new window, we can have a look um, where we are, sorry. So if we have another look at the card, we can see here that this one is our real object because we can click it and it will navigate us to somewhere. We can see there is a small avatar on top of it and we have the names underneath of it. And um, yeah, we could see also that they are yeah, quite in size. So let's recreate that. That means inside of here we have our container and let's create an own file for that just to have that a little bit separated. So sponsor cards dot dart. Good. This is a stateless widget for now. Um, sponsor cards. And inside of here we keep the placeholder. Um, we will do that later. So go to the card content replace the container here with the sponsors cards. Good, now it can be a const uh, 
again. Please fix it for the whole file, thank you. So this is how it looks. So we have enough space on the right side. But what we can see also that the padding is currently a problem because it surrounds the whole card and not only the right side. So that means we have to replace this padding here, remove it and give it to this expanded widget or better not the expanded but the column widget inside. So here we add a padding, 32. So now we have the full space on the right side but on the left side we have some padding left. <clears throat> Good. Next jump into the sponsor card and here inside we would like to have a container. Up, and this container contains a column, uh, child, column, probably don't even need the container that uh, was just to keep it but let's have a column and inside of here we have children. So the first child we have is the avatar, the um, circle avatar. Um, there is a, thankfully already a widget for that so if we save we can see there is a surrounding. Um, we probably have to increase the radius a little bit, um, radius.circular on 32. Of like this. Uh, is radius just a double? Oh, it's again const problems. Sorry for that. So, and this one radius circular 32. Uh, I think it's just a double. Okay, fantastic. So we can increase the size of that by how much we like it. I think 32 is for now perfectly fine. <clears throat> yeah, or maybe 48. Yeah, looks better. Okay, so this is the container here and I will change the color for now just to have colors red that we see how big it is and this is quite too large. So what we can say is that the size could be fixed, mm -hmm. but I don't want to do that yet because I uh, maybe we can do it dynamically on the size of the screen. So we keep that for now. So this is just one column. So nah, I want to remove this unnecessary container. Thank you. <clears throat> So we have this column. Um, we could increase their like uh, padding surrounding it or make it also 24 or something. And now we have a name. So there will be a text, Max Weber for example, or Lorem Ipsum or I uh, don't know if we have a good name for that. Uh, yeah, let's keep it for my, my name so far. Can change that later. And then we have a button style uh, or a button, um, bup, 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 uh, which button? Do, do, do. Let me quickly think, an elevated button. And the elevated button um, has an icon inside of it. So there is a separate constructor called uh, icon. The on pressed is empty. We just call pressed sponsor. And probably we can't use the const again. What a nightmare. Uh, I have to find a search or solution that I can increase my development process there. <clears throat> so make a little bit space. So icon is required, that's true. So here it complains at the moment and here it wants to have this. So the icon is an icon and we can use an, again the octo icon. So um, octo icons, oct icons dot hard. Octo icon, let's remove that hard. Let's give it a 16. Clean up, fantastic. And the label is just the tag that we can see. So in our case, this is sponsor. Yeah. Hmm, this is a text widget probably. Fantastic. And we are on a good way. Good, um, replacing, make everywhere const, fantastic. So we have the name, we have sponsor. As you can see, the text of the name is not quite perfect yet. To update that um, and let's start with this by going here and say style um, theme dot of context text theme body menu medium copy with giving the color and here we have the github colors dot text color Okay, just a uh, breasted problem. Okay, and the text color seems to be too light here. So let's have a look into our constants. Uh, highlight color is it then probably. So back to our sponsor card. Highlight color. Hmm, doesn't look quite right. So the color is a different one. Oh no, it's the correct one, sorry. Okay, 
Good, then from the button, we have to also increase there a little bit the view. So here in the button itself, we would like to change a little bit the styling. And now here gets a little bit interesting. I don't know how much you have done already the uh, button style stuff, but that is quite a, a lot of things that you have to know. So first of all, the background color. <clears throat> so for that, we will use the material state property. And here we have the constructor for all. And here we want to set the background color. So we just say um, what it is. In our case, it is GitHub colors dot background color. So and with that, it's getting dark. Uh, the background color is maybe not the right color. Let's have a look. What do we have? Background button background color. Maybe this is the right one. So yeah, it's a little bit uh, brighter so we can see it. Good. <clears throat> That's the first thing we have to do. And it's getting more interesting because now we have the background color, but we also want to have a border side. Side, we say, um, wait, that's wrong. We have a shape first. Inside of the shape, we have the material state properties, all rounded rectangle border. Inside of here, we then have to define the rounded rectangle border with the border radius <laughs> border radius dot circular um, of six and that's not all we also want to set the side because we want to have a border with the color of github colors border color so if we clean up a little bit so 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 and let's hot restart quickly. We don't see the border, that's interesting. Uh... <coughs> Excuse me. So we have the border here and the border color. Ah, we see the border color. It just has a little bit of padding necessary, I think. So can we do that somehow that it is a little bit more nice? First increase the size box here to have a height of six so with that we have a little bit more space to breathe also on top of the um, text here we should have a size box of um, height six probably something like that and now the question is inside of here why does that look so off icons material blah 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 Okay, in the meantime, uh, I had a problem because there was an update of Xcode. Thank you, Xcode 15. But <clears throat> uh, you can see I'm on edge at the moment, so on full time here. So we can see now this card contains all we need and it looks quite nice. We can click it. We get the information that it has been clicked. And obviously we could also increase now the hover effect and all these kinds of things for the buttons. But I think for now this is fine enough. And what I would like to do is now next is giving this card an own background and um, yeah, that we can create multiple of them. So for that, we need to uh, give that whole thing a container. There we give a decoration, box decoration. <clears throat> and you probably know already what's coming. We need a border. Um, we want to have it on all sides. Uh, so we're giving a border side, uh, what does you need? Ah, you just need the colors and so on. Cool. So the color is the uh, GitHub colors of the border color. Then we have the um, background color. No, not the background blend mode. It's just color. So GitHub background color. Fantastic. That works already. So we have it. Obviously, the card is way too big. <clears throat> we could change that by a size box. But for now, this is fine because we want to use that grid container soon. Okay, so we don't want to have one card, we actually want to have a lot of them. So what we could use is a grid container. I did not have a very good uh, feeling about that because I had some issues there. So what I will do, I will really create multiple of them. That means um, we will create multiple columns with rows and then enter all of them. You could also try to use the grid, um, uh, grid container. The problem with that is that it is scrollable. And because it is scrollable, it made a lot of problems there when I was working with it. So yeah, just to keep, uh, give you the idea here. So what we will do is instead of sponsor cards, we will take all of that. Uh, or what we will do is re uh, rename that to sponsor card. Also here. Up. 
yep, rename refactor, thank you. And now with that sponsor card, we also have our sponsors grid or sponsor grid dot dart. Okay, stateless widget, sponsor grid. And inside of here, as I said, we have a column and this column defines different rows, especially three of them. And I think you should be also in a child. So great stuff. And now we want to get rid of that. And now we can copy them over. Fantastic. Inside of these rows, now we can define whatever we want, like what we want to see. And as you maybe remember, we want to see here our sponsor card. One, two, three. And commas missing. Fantastic. Copy them over, having them here and here. Great. So now it will complain a little bit. We add here a const as it likes. And with that, we are ready to use this sponsor grid in our card content. So instead of using this, we are using this and we import. So now it's getting crazy. That's perfect because uh, this is exactly what we want. Also, we need to add some of the size boxings ourselves. So size boxes, uh, height of eight or let's say six. And we do that between the rows, but we also will do that between each of the elements. So a lot of copy pasting here now. So, but we can see we increase the gap. Don't worry too much that it doesn't look right now, but that will change in a second because we will turn that. So hot restart quickly just to see the difference. Uh, we have missed somewhere the space. Ah, this is not a height. This is a width in this case, obviously. Wait, wait, wait. There will be a lot of changes here now. And that's it. Hot restart. And I forgot the first row. Yep, that's true. So, and so. Good. Now we have the spacing. Now what we can do is, <clears throat> uh, it's already on the right side, but as you can see, we still have to move it, right? If we think about here, it has like a lot of more gap here between, like more uh, 12 or the double or something. So what I will do is just add here, uh, yeah, um, bup, 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 gap. Um, bup, hmm, how can we call that best? Yeah, it's a double gap. And this gap will be used everywhere instead of this six. And then I can search replace them. Good. Then we will fix this part. So, and the good thing is now we can just increase it here if we want to getting it higher. So something like this could be. Okay. Um, looks still a little bit too clean. For uh, There is also a border rounding missing I see right now. So inside of the border cards, we have to give the whole border, this one, also a radius. Border radius, you know the drill, circular, and uh, 24. So I think that is a bit too much. Yeah, something like this. And I see right now that also the main card is missing the border radius, but yeah, you know the drill that works exactly the same way. Okay. Back to our sponsor grid, what we can do now is using this column and we will do again a transform dot. And here we can now say what we want to do. We want to actually rotate that, but because we can't easily do it here, what I will do is adding again a matrix for identity. And now we can rotate by the axis we want. So which X do we want to rotate? So the x-axis would mean that we rotate it this way. That wouldn't solve the problem. If we rotate it this way, the y-axis is also wrong. The z-axis would turn it. So probably we want to rotate z. And now we can add a little bit of angle and we see it rotates quite a lot. So this is the wrong way. So something like this. And now we can rotate it like this, for example. But now we can see that the position is still off, right? Mm. That's interesting. So what I will do is using math pi divided by 12. If we um, look inside of the rotate X, we can see that this rotates it exactly by uh, there is somewhere the yeah, I found it somewhere in the documentation that this is uh, exactly the degrees amount that we need actually. So let's import that import um, the dart math package. 
as math. And then we use that math part exactly. So this is now exactly the degrees amount that we need to rotate. Okay, so there are still some things missing. For example, the translation. So translate. What does that mean? We want to move the element a little bit around inside. So hyphen 60 and something like this. So what we can see now already is that we have a little bit, we see already the cards down here and we see also the card up here and we go a little bit over our flow. So this is the problem now. We have to ignore this spacing, this bottom overflows and so on are not relevant for us. They can happen. And the reason is because we are yeah, we want this overflow to happen. So the problem is we can't, we will see this error. And before you now shut off and say, ah, Max, you stupid people, you have no idea. Um, the interesting thing about that is in a lot of bigger apps, like for example, the, um, the app from Ski, uh, G Skinner, the Wanderers app, has also these problems. So they fight also with the same problem that they have this overflow everywhere. So, and if you don't believe me, if we close that app now, because it looks already okay-ish, I would say, we could also tweak a little bit around on the left, on the right. But if we close that off, and I will do that here and say flutter run release, then it will run a release build for this uh, whole thing. And what we will see is that in release mode, these warnings are gone and it looks perfectly fine. Hopefully, if we have done everything correctly. So because I'm now on Flutter uh, Xcode 15, we see a lot of more error warnings than before. Uh, hopefully they will go away probably with the next uh, release of Flutter. Um, yeah. Okay, but as you can see, the card is already there. We can see the highlight color is behind. We could make the color a little bit darker and cutting the corners of the card. But in general, we can see all the major parts are there. We can see that if we uh, make it bigger or smaller, it's also at least a little bit of responsiveness there. And what we also can see is that the animation is working as we expect. And if we go to the right place, we can even click the sponsor. Obviously, the whole thing needs a little bit of tweaking on the left and the right. But what we can see is we can really recreate nearly all the objects that we have in CSS. It's a little bit of more work, I think, um, from my feeling at least, uh, especially that whole transform stuff is quite complicated. Another thing that I will work on in the future is, uh, you will probably have that already in the other project, if we leave the card, the card sticks where we are. So if I hover on the other side, it will jump. Dab. So what we can do is recalculate the tween between where we want to be and zero, so that when we leave and enter the screen, that it slowly fades back. So this is also done inside of the card. So that is also not very difficult. It's just a replacement of the tween. Uh, in the final project that you find down in the link in the video description, I will add that or feature also so that you don't have to do it. All right, that's it for today and this translation. I really hope you enjoyed this GitHub sponsor card and you learned a lot of new things, for example, translation, how to animate everything, how to create and recreate things like that, and that you not always have to listen to warnings. If you now want to see another cool hover effect, you find it here, else check out the link in the video description. Support me on Patreon, that would be very helpful and share the video with everyone who could be interested. Thanks for watching, till the next time, bye.